The Mongolian Empire of the 13th and 14th centuries was one of the largest empires that ever existed. It covered the second largest territory ever controlled, only being surpassed by the British Empire. The Mongolic peoples originated on the plateau of Mongolia in Central Asia, and their ancestry is often traced to the Jungno people, who created the great tribal confederacy at the same time as China was unified as an imperial state. The Jungno were fierce horseback warriors whose repeated intrusions into China prompted the construction of the Great Wall. In the medieval period, these nomadic tribes were made up of five major confederations known as Khanlings, which were nothing more than rival clans. The Mongol social structure, economy and culture showed little change over history. They have always been nomads of the Asian steppe who herded horses, sheep and other animals. These tribes moved according to the seasons and lived in temporary camps. The earliest belief system in Mongolia was a form of shamanism based on the reverence of nature and revolved around the worship of ancestor spirits and devotion to Father Sky. The Mongol Empire was founded in 1206 by a young man named Temujin who was fighting for territory in the Asian steppes. Because his victories enabled him to unite the nomadic Mongol and Turkic tribes of the Asian steppe for the first time, he was given the name Genghis Khan, meaning universal ruler. He reformed his people's laws and ushered in a military feudal form of government, embracing trade and religious freedom in the process. He further united his empire by using the Uyghur Turk script to turn the Mongol language into a written one. The United Mongol tribes boasted a very effective army with fast and highly coordinated cavalry for many reasons, including their very nature, as they were trained from childhood to ride horses and shoot bows, as well as their adoption of advanced military techniques and tactics, often taken from conquered peoples such as gunpowder, arrow storms, and repeated hit-and-run barrages. Also, the Mongols had gained a reputation for destroying their enemies, which spread fear and panic among their adversaries as news of the cities they had raised preceded them. Despite its reputation for brutal warfare, the Mongol Empire actually brought a period of peace, stability and prosperity across Eurasia and the Silk Road, called Pax Mongolica. Notable victories by Genghis Khan include the Battle of Yaoling in northern China as well as the invasion of the Khawarezm Empire, one city after another. Over the next few decades, the Mongols would invade the Middle East, Syria, Turkey, the Caucasus region, and sack the Muslim Abbasid capital Baghdad, as they expanded in all directions, reaching Palestine by the end of the 13th century. After Genghis Khan's death, he left the empire to his heir Ugedeid, which caused internal rife within the empire as others disputed whether the royal line should follow through one of his other sons. The split was further disputed over whether the Mongol Empire would become sedentary and cosmopolitan or if it would stay true to the Mongol nomadic and steppe-based lifestyle. The Toluids, after a bloody purge of rival dynasties claiming descent from Genghis Khan, prevailed as leaders of the Mongol Empire. Then the Toluid civil war between Kublai Khan and his brother Arik Bok marked the end of a unified empire in the 13th century, resulting in the formation of four Khanates. As Great Khan, Kublai set his sights on unifying all of China. In 1271, he established his capital at modern-day Beijing and formed the Yuan Dynasty in a traditional Chinese style, which was one of several efforts to win over his Chinese subjects. In 1279, after years of resistance from the Song Dynasty of China, Kublai became the first foreigner to rule all over China. He would later launch two failed invasions into Japan, while also going on multiple incursions into Southeast Asia. Following Kublai's death, the Mongols disintegrated into competing Khanates and lost influence in part due to the outbreak of the Black Death. Eventually, they became sedentary societies, with many converting from traditional shamanism to Buddhism or Islam. By 1368, the Chinese Ming Dynasty took over the Yuan capital, marking the collapse of the Yuan Dynasty in China proper. Another Mongol Khanate, the Golden Horde, had broken up into competing Khanates by the end of the 15th century and was defeated and thrown out of Russia, while the Shagatai Khanate fell not long after. Although the Mongols' conquests caused destruction on a massive scale across huge territories, they left behind great legacies such as the reformed and stabilized silk trade network and the first serious connections between the East and West with the potential for a modern era characterized by the unity of disparate peoples.